Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Salty Sweet Games, where we shenanigan sob and smooch our way through tabletop role-playing games. I'm one of your hosts, Salty. And I'm Sweet. And these various assorted spices, they're over here today, are our friends. Uh, welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep. Welcome to our Pulp Cthulhu long-running campaign. Uh, before we go around and check in with everyone, talk about their characters, how they're feeling, we have some channel stuff. First off, a ton of thanks to our sponsors, starting with Roll20, a virtual tabletop of choice, <sighs> which unites gamers across any distance with easy to use tools that run straight from your web browser for free. We're part of their spotlight program, which highlights indie TTRPG creators all across the interwebs. Yes. We also have uh, affiliate links with Dice Envy and Grinding Coffee Co., two awesome companies. Uh, we have codes with them as well if you want to save money and help support the channel and get your physical click clack through your dirty bean water. Uh, Grinding Coffee Co. is also LGBTQIA plus owned. Uh, so if you are looking for an awesome company to support... They're very awesome. That's all I'm saying. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, thank you to everybody who has a subbed, gifted subs, followed, liked videos on YouTube, watched, whatever you are doing. We appreciate you. We had fun playing. We played some Resident Evil Village yesterday, and that, that, that was pretty fun. I just want to share that with you. So if I sound particularly craggly. I mean, more than I usually do. It's because I was screaming a lot last night. Um, <laughs> of course, there are uh, tip incentives. If you want to support that way, uh, they can impact the game using bits or our Streamlabs tip jar. Click on the panel image effect of the game. It'll tell you what you want to know. Everything that comes in goes to working on new projects, channel upkeep, and of course, compensating our cast so you can help us keep the lights on, help out the PCs. It's always appreciated, but never expected. Last thing, we here at Salty Sweet Games use safety tools, lines, veils, X and N, O cards, stars and wishes and content warnings because while the characters may be put through hell, the players are here to have fun and they are a priority always. So we should meet them. Kiana, I guess you should start. Hell yeah. 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 Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Kiana. I'm the sweet of this channel. Uh, but, and my pronouns are she and they. Uh, but today I am playing Irene Blackwell. Her pronouns are she and her. Uh, she is uh, the forger of the group. Uh, she's getting better at learning Shanghainese. It's hard. <laughs> There's a lot happening. Um, and yeah, uh, she's currently kind of just in the middle of stuff. And X is here, super cash, no biggie. Yeah, it's all it's all great. It's all going great. I don't know why not be going great. Good, good, good. Let's head over to Allie. Hi, I'm Allison. I play <laughs> Ganymede Graves, adventure scientist, and I think I might be in trouble. Mm. I I have my my spidey senses are tingling. Are we gonna get like are we gonna get this video killed for that? Because I used a Marvel copyright, probably. Sorry. Hey, um, yeah, I'm I I'm scared. I'm just scared. Anytime I'm in the presence of Madame Swallow, I'm scared. That is now. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Great. Summer. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Summer. <laughs> uh, I use she, her pronouns, and today I am playing one Mr. Charlie Rapp, who uses he, him pronouns. And I want to I wanna punch a very particular person. And I've, it's been a long time coming that I've wanted to punch mm. said person that will rename mm. remain nameless for the moment mm. but we all know who i'm talking about who i'm thinking about right do we all know who i'm talking about lauren do you know who i'm talking about no nope. you look you look confused like you don't know who i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> uh. um and nothing could go wrong literally nothing could go wrong i can't wait great 
cool. Feeling, feeling fresh, feeling clean. <laughs> yep. And, of course, Tommy is a little under the weather, but that's fine because Zebulon was in a bathtub. Uh, not with the rest of the group last time we saw drowning, him. Drowning, drowning. I mean, like, he could have drowned, but Chuman's <laughs> strong arms were there to pull him out. Ugh, romance. Our group our group has never taken a bath together, just for the record. I, I, that was confusing a moment ago. On screen. Not, not yet. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. That's our, the, the characters. While well, the characters have never... <laughs> characters right. that were taking a bath all together sure <laughs> okay uh anyway happy pride let's get into it uh the investigators came together over the murder of their good friend jackson elias who was investigating the infamous carlisle expedition the members of which were all formerly presumed dead that led him and now you all to a conspiracy involving various death cults around the world Many names, many forms, but all the same and to one end. You theorize that these cults are amassing in specific locations around the globe and working together to build a machine of some sort. In Shanghai, you know the cult in question is called the Order of the <laughs> Bloated Woman. Hi, Kira. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, hey, Michael Wayne. Welcome in. Thank you for the raid. Uh, where was I? Ah, in Shanghai. You know the cult in question is called the Order of the Bloated Woman, and their high priest is the merchant Ho Fang. You've met Jack Brady, a former living member of the Carlisle Expedition, who knows what the cult is doing and can help you stop them if you rescue his friend Choi Mei Ling. Which you did. Kind of. I mean, not yet. You gotta cross the finish line, you know? Uh, to be specific, last time, Ganymede and Zeb's minds were trapped in a hellish pocket dimension while Charlie and Irene freed Choi Mei Ling from the glass coffin torture chamber. Uh, Zebulon managed to find Ganymede and kind of combine their essences, and when they had an opening, Ganymede used her will to pull both of them free of the crawling ceiling. The group helped Ganymede and Choi Mei-Ling scale the wall of Ho Fang's estate, where they were then taken away by Madame Lin's hirelings. <laughs> Belated high five. Uh, the rest of you, with some clutch rolls, return to your positions in the lounge and library and manage to leave with Madame Lin. Later at her home, Madame Lin told Ganymede that she would be overseeing the exchange with Jack Brady, taking, uh, you know, Charlie's earlier advice that he gave so freely. Uh, Charles and Irene... Uh, arrived on the scene and met up with Victor at the front door, who's having dinner with Madame Lynn before he leaves for America for no reason. Meanwhile, Zeb was taking a bath and dozed off. He had a dream of natural disasters, plague, famine, tsunamis, and finally, a solar eclipse and a green gash in the sky, out of which began to pour monstrous shapes. Zeb might have drowned in the tub, but uh, Chu Min was there to shake him awake and save him with his big strong arms. Okay. It is the late afternoon slash early evening of Sunday, May 17th. Five days before the new moon, in case you were curious. Mm, I don't have to start with Chu Min, so I think we can actually... Cut over to Madame Swallow's house. I know everyone's very excited to get back there. Uh, some time is going to pass between your arrival and dinner proper. Maybe an hour to two. So the three of you are uh, shown to a guest suite. Uh, Madame Lynn has assigned her servants to patch Choi Mei Ling up and she is resting uh, in a separate room from you unless you insist that she be in your room. Either way, is doable. Um, yeah, I don't think she's gonna like try and like sneak her out or anything like that. Like, 
It's so, her house. Hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> where would she go? We've been so. Yeah, I think I think it's fine if she's in a different room, yeah. resting. The three of you are together. So what happened? They were waiting for us on the other side of the wall. They tried to take her alone, but I wouldn't let them. I'm sorry I couldn't get word back. Yeah, no worries. I mean, we figured that something had happened. She, Madam Lynn, that is, seems eager to make the exchange with Jack, but there was a moment while we were having tea that, um, uh, that, that Choi Mei Lin was, she was tapping very lightly. It was Morse code. She, she said, don't leave me. Well, I guess then we'll stay until she's reunited with Jack Brady. I wonder what it is she's afraid of. I'm after what she's just been through. I mean, it could be nothing. It could be something substantial. And she was Madame Lynn's possession. Who knows how Madame Lynn treats those that she possesses. We should, if we can, I, I don't know if she's already tried to get in contact with Jack Brady, but if we, if we can, we should try and get to him first. I think it would be fair to give him a little bit of a heads up. Yes. I wonder what the best way to do that would be. Great question. I I'm trying to remember what Jack told us about how to get in contact with Yeah, him. that's what I'm yeah. thinking too. <laughs> we, so we did. I think we I think we kind of like as we were running away when the police raid happened, I think we kind of like hand waved it. Like he gives us a way to get in contact with him, right? I Didn't we say think, something like that? Uh, he, it was, was quickly? to. It had to do with Chu Men. Chu, okay, okay. Chu Men yeah, would yeah, contact yeah. him for you. Okay, okay. Well, well, we can see if we can get in touch with with Chu Men. Um, I could see if I could send a letter, or find somebody to deliver a message. Yes, it's as good an idea as any, I suppose. And I, I guess until then, we, we wait here. Did she make any indication of when exactly she wanted to make that exchange? No, she didn't. You said that, that, um, Mr. Gallo is here. To our surprise, yes. Yep, here for dinner, I guess. Bad penny and all that. He seems to be everywhere that we don't want him to be. <laughs> Are we, I, I suppose that the, the, you two have both had a chance to wash and change and Ganymede is still in the remains of the flower girl dress that she wore as a disguise into yeah. her fangs. So are you going to change? I, if, if there's something for me to change into, if, if yeah, our yeah. hostess has provided something suitable yes you have an hour to two right now before before dinner i yeah. want to know um are y'all doing anything you took some stuff 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we took a bunch of scroll scrolls, right? Mm -hmm. Scrolls oh. and books. Um, yes. So I'm gonna try. Things. I'm gonna try and like get in touch with Mr. Lee. I think. Your comprador? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he came with us or not. Probably not. No, um, no. I think when. I no. I think I remember he was like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just we've we've whatever. told we, last time I think we saw him, we were like, hey, you should go. And he was like, absolutely, I should. Um, I would love to try and get in contact with him to get a message to uh, to try and get some word out to Jack Brady, like of what's going on. If I could, if okay. I could, if, it, if we've got hours, like I could run out and go find him down by the docks if like uh, if necessary. The servants <laughs> will block your path and say cool. they can handle anything for you. Cool. Yeah. I'll just be like, hey, could you send a message to somebody for me? Okay. So you want to send a Big message smile. to Mr. Lee to... To send a message to <laughs> Chumin to send a message to Jack Brady. <laughs> my my whole thing is that someone's going <laughs> to... If the servants are doing it, they're gonna they're gonna read that message. Oh yeah, like, they're absolutely yeah. yes, yes. They're I don't, very, they're I, very the thing open is, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like the message is we've got her. Like I think that's the message, right? Uh -huh. Like it's not like in depth or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, I don't care if they read that; they know she's here. So it's just my concern is that they will know that we are trying to get to Jack Brady first. I'm not really worried about it, honestly. Okay. <laughs> if 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 y'all stop me, I won't do it. But I think, I think that there's it's a pretty innocent gesture to send word to Jack Brady that she's here. I don't think that there's anything like necessarily like inherently underhanded about telling him that his companion is with us, right? It's not like we've got our sneaker around the back and we can sneak her out to you. It's just telling him like. Hey, we're here. She's here. Here's where she is. They say they'll deliver it for you. And as all of this is happening, I'm laying out the books and scrolls on the yes. on the bed in this in this chamber, just so they're all out in the open, and we can begin to uh, to 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 look at them. Yeah, I want to touch them. <laughs> I can't read, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, one you look at uh, is in classical Chinese, uh, though you can't date it at all, Ganymede. Uh, it's a single scroll on parchment uh, in this uh, carved ivory scroll case that has silver filigree around it. Uh Let's see, what else do we have? <laughs> uh, there's one in French. Uh, the Livre d'Yvonne. I feel like we've seen this book before, but I could be making that up. Um, a quarto folded handwritten bound in royal blue, some kind of leather. Uh, you can make a natural world if you wanted to know what kind. Of course I do. Yeah, who wouldn't? The the French book, it, can you give me a, like a, a brief glance? I can read French, so. Oh, um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Ganymede, it's stingray leather. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Uh, this This book, let's see. Uh, it is uh, translated by Gaspard de Nord. Yes, yes, you have seen this. You saw it in the Penhue Foundation basement. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. That's where yep. you saw it. Yep. Um, it is the same... It is the same book. It looks okay, cool. the same. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Latin book. Oh, that's right, because it's basically just the Liberi of Onus. Got it. Uh, the Latin book, as I said, 
um, Spanish black letter folio uh, bound in oxblood colored leather, secured by ornate clasps set with a variety of semi-precious stones. And then there is another uh, classical Chinese scroll, uh, no author, no date. Uh, it's five scrolls, handwritten, um, and then five scrolls of maybe commentary, and they're all kind of in this matching set of silk scroll boxes. So those are what you find. What is the... I think I should be able to read the Latin, or at least to get the gist of it. Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to take some time to read the Latin? Yes, I do. I do. I we want to invest hours. myself. <laughs> Great. Good. I'm going to look at the French book and be like, oh, I've seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it's got it. kind like... of like a Gallic <laughs> twist to it, but it yeah, is the yeah. same thing. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. The Latin. <laughs> um, make a make a make a history check. All right. I'd love to. A history check. Go. I don't have much for that. Big old five. Big old five. Um, I might give you archaeology for this actually, because it's about dating it so roll that too oh, and I that's will. a little better yeah there we go that's what i thought um you do find a date on it from the 13th century uh 1228 um but the the folio itself appears to be like 17th century uh you find a name oleus wormius uh, a monk apparently Fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Does it have a title? Yeah. Uh, it is called The Necronomicon. And as you begin to read, <laughs> Ganymede's head falls back on the couch. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the music just gave me chill. <laughs> the music shift just gave me chill. It took me. It took my brain. A hot second to process what was just said. But what the fuck? <laughs> I run over to Ganymede whose yeah. head just fell back on the fucking sofa. Yep. 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 yep, yep. What's it? How? What's happening to her, Lauren? Uh, she looks. I mean, not fine, but you know, uh, her. She's like pressed back into the couch, like a force is like physically pushing or pulling her back, rather. Uh, Ganymede. Yes. You see some of the same images Zeb saw in his vision. The, the earthquake uh, and the tsunami, the, the famine and plague, and then that solar eclipse and the green gash across the sky. Something Something you've heard before, not from this book, but from another, though, begins to speak to you after Ho Fang's words end. You don't recognize this voice, although it does remind you maybe Charles has said this before. The external angles were magnificent and most strange. By their hideousness, I was enraptured and enthralled, and I thought myself of the daylight fools who had judged the housing of this room so mistaken. 
I laughed for the glory they missed. Through the twisted doors to the jeweled throne of darkness, I came with all reverence and humility to gaze upon scenes of celestial majesty and rebirth. When the six lights were lit and the great words said, then he came in all the grace and splendors of the higher planes, and I longed to sever my veins so that my life might flow into his being and make part of me a god. You don't feel that, that pull anymore. You are standing before a great arch. That image, that figure in the Miles Shipley painting, the Pharaoh, is standing there too. His green eyes gazing down on you. He gestures toward the archway, through which you can see a marketplace, but not a modern one. And that air, arid, maybe somewhere in Africa? I look up to the figure on my guard, but in that dreamy sort of way where you trust everything and nothing at the same time. And I say, what is this place? I think the Pharaoh warps as he answers you until you see the form of Augustus Larkin. His eyes dripping. It's what you've been searching for. I look at him quizzically for a moment. And then I say, may I enter? Of course. And Ganymede is, is, is just about to move forward. And she looks back at the Larkin figure and says, how can I return? I'm sure you'll find a way. Make a spot hidden check. Nice. A hard success. On the other side, moving through this crowded marketplace, looking at it more closely with your archaeology background, this looks like ancient Egypt. But there are two figures who stick out to you. William and Phoebe Graves. Your parents. They're looking around and your mother grabs your father's sleeve and her eyes catch yours. You see her cry out. She says your name, but it's far away. Almost like it's underwater, the way the sound works. 
and she starts running towards you across the marketplace, uh, your father falling behind a bit, and you feel Larkin's hand on your shoulder. Let me bring Nitocris back. Let me keep her vessel, and I will free them. I'm, I'm, I'm so distracted that it's hard for me to engage with him properly, but as it, she never takes her eyes off her parents, but she says, vessel, what, what vessel? Oh. <gasps> Oh my, you're not here yet, are you? And you wake up. <laughs> Ganymede's body goes from that arch-backed rigor with every muscle tensed. It falls uh, limp she's drenched in sweat and there is a as it happens there's this you'd almost imagine it was uh, it was the scent of, of myrrh or frankincense or something like that but it, it vanishes quickly Maybe it was just your imagination. But after laying there for uh, still about five seconds, her eyes snap open. And, and she is looking up, she's looking up into Charlie's eyes. And she scrambles back uh, kind of uh, against until she's up against the the wall uh and and she looks at you and says i i i saw him i saw the 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 pharaoh or, or larkin or whatever oh, it's it's right there i, I was I was in, it was the desert, I think it was Egypt, and she begins to describe for you the vision that she's just had. And, and, and she ends on the, on, on what he said about the, the vessel, about leaving, leaving to him or giving him the vessel. Yeah, so, so during this, I think Irene would have taken the book, not looked at it, because she has enough awareness of, ah, oh, fuck, we've kind of across things that if you look at them, does weird shit. I'm not going to look at that. So probably, like, just takes it away while this is all happening. And then as Ganymede is describing the vision, I think has scrambled out her note, her sketch pad, and is doing what she does best, which is drawing it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Charles, you recognize the words from Life as a God that you first read in Erica Carlyle's mansion. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, by the way, I'm real sorry about this. I'm what real the sorry. Hell? Allie, what are you talking about? I'm real sorry. I don't. You have that thing. You have that thing. Hit me with it. 11 sanity loss. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> it's the Necronomicon. <laughs> it is. It is. Wow. So I have yes. uh, the resilient pulp talent, which allows me to spend luck points to shrug off sanity loss point for point. Um, I, I think I can, I don't think I have to, it's, I don't think it's all or nothing. I think it's mm -mm. point no, for point, like it says. It. Yeah. 
Ja, um, but gosh, I, I'm going to, I'm still going to take a nine point sanity loss, I think. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I want to know, like, we don't really, we don't do temporary insanity. Our sanity is the will to fight. So I want you to tell me how this affects your will to fight. Yeah, I... Ganymede has, has not allowed herself to dare to hope for her parents since all of this started and since she saw the first vision of them drinking the amber liquid uh, at their at their camp in the jungle. But after experiencing this vision, uh, she can't she can't help but but imagine that that might be possible. And and so I, I think that, to a certain extent, there's this reverie in her mind of, of how to possibly make that happen. And I think she's also, I, I think she's just, she's a little tempted by the offer. So maybe she's not quite so, quite so eager to intervene as as she would be under other circumstances mm. yep that makes a lot of sense to me <clears throat> knowing what i know you also get plus five to your cthulhu mythos score that's five yep. nice and from your cursory reading there is some kind of handwritten uh, marginalia that talk about a gate to uh, and then there are several names uh, there are, you recognize the bloated woman uh, you recognize of course the black pharaoh the bloody tongue uh, and the haunter of the dark is another that you see. And this marginalia describes opening gates to to these yeah. these names. Okay. From okay. from a from a cursory glance. Are there six of them total? Is that um I think, I mean, I think they, they go on, right? Yeah, okay. The same kind of names you heard Makunga Madari say. Uh, okay. That all ended in Naira Lathotep. Hmm. Okay, yeah. The, the, this is, uh... <laughs> uh pieces beginning to come together in uh -huh. the opening of gates and and so forth. I know I haven't technically seen or, or I don't technically know about the the dream that that Zeb had, right? But um you saw the same things. Okay. I just didn't want to redescribe it. Okay. Did I have that did I get that same spoken? Yep. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. Yeah, so I, I, that is that is part of what is of what is taking up her mind and, and distracting her right now is is she recognizes that that message is about these machines that that we've seen plans for them building and imagines that this is some plan to distribute like radioactive material into the atmosphere and blow something up and open this portal for uh, for Nyarlathotep to 
to return. And this connects with what she knows that with what Charlie said about the Sea Devil crew being radiation poisoned. And, and I think she's kind of just lost in all of this as well. And as, as terrible as it sounds, right? I think she's like, how bad, how bad could it be? Which part? <laughs> yeah, which part? You part? know, which the whole part? ending of the world, the whole complete but domination really... by an eldritch god, the radiation stuff. Who knows? I just lost nine points of sanity. <laughs> true, 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 true. By choice. <laughs> yeah. Um. Awesome. So, are there any last things you would like to do before it's time for dinner? I'm gonna go have a quick cry. No. Perfect. <laughs> Everyone deserves one of those. Yeah, I think other other than this, what we've just done, I think we're good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. Irene had put a note or a label or something on the book that said, do not open. <laughs> Don't. Cool. I think I was wearing this top the first time I use yeah. the void eyes. I'm pretty sure you were. I think I'm so. pretty sure you yeah. were. Nice. Full circle. Full circle. Full circle, baby. Okay, it's dinner time. Woo. Woo. Nice. Uh, so you were shown to a dining room you haven't even seen before. Another of her many. Um, Victor is there, not offering conversation unless it's offered to him first. Uh, and... Madam Lynn makes her appearance. Her two servants are here. Uh, Choi Mei Ling is not, but if you passed by her room, she is still in her room, just sleeping. Um, and food begins to be brought out. Yeah, I think the atmosphere at the table is fairly tense, mm. I would think. <laughs> I mean, maybe for all of you. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think definitely for Charlie, it's, 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 it's kind of, I mean, he's being pleasant, I think. <laughs> he always is. But I, I mean, he can't help it. He exudes charm. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's definitely like a different kind of atmosphere after the day that we've had, like, all that shit with the ceiling was today. That was this morning, right? Yep, like, yep. holy shit, today. Today is a bit crazy. So, yeah, I think, like, I think he's not he's not as chatty as usual, not, like, as pleasantly chatty as usual. Normal, quieter amounts of chatty. Irene? God, Irene doesn't do well in social situation generally. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, and, and here we are at this slightly tense dinner party with a person who has, we're trying to, you know, <clears throat> establish some form of okay relationship with and deal with the power dynamics. And then also her ex is here. So uh, she's quiet. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, she will respond and, and, and exchange pleasantries and small talk if it's directed towards her. You know what? It yeah. absolutely is. So, tell me more about yourself, Miss Blackwell. Oh, God. <laughs> Victor spoke highly of you. Your skills. Ah. Uh, right, uh. Well, I'm sure you've heard then that I, um, am an artist. Mm. Uh, mostly work in, uh, in oils, uh, and sketching, mostly charcoal and pencil. 
<laughs> she just smiles. Where do you come from? Well, uh, I'm sure you can tell that I was born and raised in the States. My parents emigrated there uh, long before I was born, so. But I uh, eventually moved to New York. Just small talk, just like super casual. So casual. Six cash small talk is happening. Uh, What's mm. how's Victor reacting to this casual small talk that's happening? Victor is looking down, eating his food. He is uncharacteristically quiet. Fun. Love do that. Po- do I want to poke at that though? Do I want to? <laughs> do you want to poke at it? I kind of want to poke at it like a little bit. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Don't do it. Do, do it. it. Don't do it. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so. So. I. Okay. Um. Madam Swallow said to Ganny that he was leaving for the states, but did Ganny tell us that? Did she? I don't think you had you had it in no. character. I don't know if you had. I mean, you didn't literally, but did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. But that was kind of a the the fact that Victor was here was sort of an afterthought. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Bless you. Because I'm tight. Bless you. No one heard anything. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think we're having dinner, and Charlie's just like. So, Victor, you just here for laughs or the company? I was invited. Great. So happy you were. Yeah, he's not quipping back. It's really weird. Yeah, that is really weird. I think Charlie's like, he's like waiting for it, you know, and he doesn't do it. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> I thought at least something like, um, why are you so uncharacteristically quiet? If you were invited to dinner, you could contribute to conversation. I didn't think all of you would be here. Well, we didn't think we'd be here either. But making the most of it. Yeah, life throws you curveballs, huh? So you're disappointed that we came to dinner? Just unexpected. Can I get a read on him? Like, can I please do something? Can I do something? What's going on with him? Is he sad? Is he mad? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. You make a psychology I, check. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah. He's being weird. Why is he being so weird? Hard, oh, whatever. Hard to say. Hard to say. Yeah, He's a mysterious, say. handsome man. I don't. Also, I don't care that much. So, yeah, yeah, true. It... <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I wanted to succeed anyway. So, yeah, I wanted to fail. So, good. <laughs> Turned out the way I wanted to do. Um, yeah, I think Charlie is just like kind of like side eyeing him, like can't really get a read on him. And then it's just like, oh, whatever. If he's going to be a grumpy baby, then he can be a grumpy baby over in the corner. <laughs> Charlie's just going to go back to enjoying his dinner. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Madam Lynn says, so, um, Jack Brady, when might we be expecting him? It's hard to say. Um, I let him know that we were here. I haven't heard anything back. I assumed that you would have reached out to him as well. I have my ways, but of course, if I could have found him on my own, I would not have needed your help. 
Yeah, that's true. You're lucky we came by. <laughs> Sips tea. <laughs> you sent word to your comprador. You trust him with that sort of information. I do. He's he's um, been with us since we got here, and he's seen more than his fair share and has stuck around. <laughs> you don't have to worry about him, is what I mean. Oh, I'm not worried about uh, Li Wencheng. Great. You should know that I think it won't be today, maybe not even tomorrow, that uh, Jack Brady is able to make the trade. Well, um, I think it will be sooner rather than later. I had my servants make a little addendum to your message. Oh, really? What was that? Oh, just, um... Time limit. And what was that time limit? Mm, tonight. So I hope he is as uh, good as you seem to think. They'll help him along, though, the ones I sent. You do realize that we were getting Choi Mei Ling as a gesture of goodwill for Jack Brady so that we may get your scroll back. And this could blow up in your face and you could get nothing at all. Mm. Great. Dinner's delicious. <laughs> uh, I need listen checks. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, nice, nice. Even better. <laughs> Come on, Irene. Someone do good. Damn it. You, I'll yes. use two luck. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hold on. I have things. I have things to roll. For no reason. You shouldn't even be worried about it. I love my, like, just it. getting there. <laughs> yeah, just no. barely getting there. Yeah, just got there. I just barely heard it. I hit the hurdle on the mm. way over. <laughs> <laughs> but you still got over. <laughs> you yeah. did. You did. Uh, I'll give it in two. Yep, bad. Good job, Irene. <clears throat> Actually, I want to give... Now, I have so many character sheets for this. I want, <laughs> I want to give Madame Lynn a chance to uh, listen. I don't even know if she has listen. No, damn. She's busy with the sass in her ear. Um, so as you're all eating, I think maybe there's a record on uh, kind of obscuring... Uh, some of the street sounds from outside, but uh, Irene, your ear catches uh, sound like a like maybe like a sharp inhale of breath, like <gasps> that's cut off. Maybe in the next room. And like some, the sound of feet on carpet. Lots of feet. Okay. What do you do? What do you do? I am going to excuse myself. Uh huh. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know. Just going to the bathroom. Hey, I just, I know that I don't need to say it, but I'm just going to say it. 
anyway and lauren i know that you know this so i'm gonna just say it for the audience at home i'm never surprised in combat never <laughs> right that has a mechanical thing it doesn't mean anything besides what it means mechanically right but yeah but it, it, it but it's mechanical but it's it, it, fictional too you know <laughs> yeah I, yeah you know you, you're absolutely right uh, irene oh, you go to excuse yourself and uh victor stands up and says oh my god can i walk with you just I can't say no without making it seem like a big deal, so. Um, certainly. Yeah, so he walks with you into the, the hallway that connects to, I think, the main room. And you see the, you see the carpet, the like, the runner is like scrunched up. Mm-hmm. After something's been dragged or... Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he looks... He sees it. Um, kind of, like, just, like, straightens it out. But looks alert. Can I guess what kind of direction? Yeah. Based on country? Okay. Yeah. Um... Too much super cash, no big deal. Uh, yeah, I think the two, the two of you like make eye contact. Like you've seen this shit before. Well, good to see that my hearing is still sharp enough. Where's your gun? It was taken. <clears throat> I know where she keeps them. Come on. Is there a reason why you're helping, or...? I guess... <sighs> Think of it as a goodbye present. Considering how we left off last time, I thought that was the farewell. Yeah, well. Like I said, life throws you curveballs. I think Irene, for a second, thinks about asking him if he's leaving, but this is more pressing, mm. <laughs> you know, and so she'll just kind of nod. Right, well, um, I appreciate it and lead the way. So as you start moving down the hallway, um... You uh, pass by uh, the the kind of main area, um, and all the lights are off. And he's starting to like walk in there because that's apparently where they are. He goes to. Yeah, it would be a switch, right? He goes to flip a switch. And as the lights come on, five uh, men in yellow and black robes holding sickles are right. <laughs> laying down quietly. Some of Madame Lynn's other guards and they all, everyone kind of freezes in the light. <laughs> And we are going to go into initiative. Great! <laughs> love, love that for us so much. 
<laughs> Irene, you know what's amazing? You are actually first. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you do not have your gun. It's I don't CCL. have my gun. <laughs> How? What is this room set up like? Uh, this is like the big entryway. So uh, you came in the hallway to the dining room. There is a way to Madame Lynn's where uh, Zeb met privately with her, where Tun Tun and Ping, the gorillas, are. There's a way to get there, but it's just a large room. Okay. Uh, large across, room. And across the hall. So if you go down the hall, it's the dining room. Across the hall is her artifacts collection. Okay. Large room. Actually, I know what it looks like. That's why I can't draw it. Um, <laughs> hold on. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll draw it on the. I'll draw it on the map. On the map. <laughs> on the map. On the map. <laughs> Boy. Uh, and then the hallway goes up here to the dining room. Dining room. <laughs> <laughs> Collection is over here. And you are here. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm hmm Great. Oh, and her little her little private meeting area is right here. Yes. Okay. Perfect. What a perfect, perfect thing. And then more of the houses past the dining room. Okay. So weird question. Mm hmm Can I smell that zoo smell that usually comes with having two fucking gorillas nearby? Um the door to um uh or like the screen is pulled shut, uh so it's not very strong. You assume they're somewhere. Okay. But, like, you know where, because Zeb told you. Yeah. I have no weapons. There are no easily accessible weapons around. So, my move is I'm going to run to that private the private room. Yep, yep. Uh, and fling open the, <laughs> the, the door. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. Inside, again, that smell hits you, you see kind of the setup for her, like, interviews, um, and you see their silhouettes behind the screen. Are there, are they chained down in any way, or are they just vibing? They're just vibing, I think. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do something real, real silly. Uh, okay. Um... I'm gonna get close to. I'm gonna knock over that screen. Okay. Um, I think you're you're trying to herd them, basically. My right right now, I'm just hello. I'm your attention. Look at me. <laughs> and then you're gonna run back. Yeah. Look. Look like I'm. Because they're animals, they uh -huh. probably don't know who what I am yeah. or what my intentions are. Yeah. My intention right now is hello. I am an intruder. Yeah. Come okay. get me. That will absolutely then, work. Okay. Come get me and then go back out there. From from the dining room, <laughs> all of you hear uh, the roar of a gorilla or two. And Madame Lynn uh, stands up. You can't act yet, but you all know something is going on now. It's actually... Uh, is there anything else you want to do, Irene? Um... Nope, that's that's mostly it. That's mostly it's just Great. let's bring the gorillas <laughs> let's bring the gorillas into this. Okay. Because I have no weapons. Um I am going to roll some dice. Um because they they're next in initiative. So they are indeed going to follow you out. Um because that is what they are trained to do. Uh so one Two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna roll a d6. Uh, what number do you want to be? Oh, I don't know. Uh, three. <laughs> oh no. 
Great. Let me see what the other one's doing. I mean, the other one's going after the one of the cultists. So they come charging out of the room. Um, <laughs> I am booking it towards the cultist. Oh, I, I like, know. Like, I look wild because I'm yeah. just like, let me just head towards them. No biggie. <laughs> the smaller one uh, seems a bit fixated on you. Um, <laughs> my God. It's fine. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. <laughs> hit me. Um, yeah. Uh, so it goes after you with its hands. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. So it rolled max damage. Oh, Great. No, that's plus also. Oh god. No, that's the extreme damage. That's right. Twelve. It double. It doubled it. Um, but it. Uh, so it charges out and like punches you to the ground, which is great. That's great. Good. Love that for four. me. Yep. For so twelve. So twelve damage. Yep. For the first one. Cool. Uh, would you like to try and dodge or fight yes, back? Yes, I'm going to fucking try to dodge. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Try to dodge. Uh, I'm going to use advantage here because, ow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Love that for me. Those are great, but they're not enough. Yeah. Uh, so it punches you to the ground uh, and uh, stands on top of you. This one isn't for damage, but I need to see what happens. Yep. Okay, uh, you, yeah, so it holds you there as you're, like, punched down, it holds you, whereas the, uh, other one <clears throat> goes after one of the, the cultists, the nearest one. Great, love that. Uh, uh, cool. I miss this, uh, but hits with the second one, so, geez, okay, minus six on this poor cultist great uh and they look terrified they look absolutely terrified um great you know they definitely did not factor this into their plans mm -hmm. so you know cool yeah. love it's somewhat working yeah yeah absolutely it's somewhat working uh the two servants the twins um book it out of the dining room like you've never seen people move so fast um and they are pulling uh blackjacks out of their robes um and going in uh and they are going to yeah they're going to use them i have macros yeah uh we're going after uh, cultists four and five. You see them, Irene, as you're like pinned down, um, like moving with this incredible speed and precision. I mean, we'll see what happens, but um, okay, this is on four. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Nice. Uh, so the 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 girl uh, comes in and just like charges up to the cultist like before i mean they're distracted by the gorillas and she smacks him across the face with her blackjack uh he needs to make a hard con roll or uh and actually that's a that's a i don't think it's an extreme so it's just the normal damage or he falls unconscious cultist for what is your con so he needs to make a, a 35 or no, he's unconscious. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, the twin. I laugh, Lauren. The twin. Uh, the twin does not make it. Um, that cultist is a bit more um, prepared. I'm not bothering with dodges for them. They will dodge if they, if they expect something. But how could they expect anything? Uh, Ganymede. You are surprised, so I will allow you movement and nothing else. At the sound of the gorillas, I, I, Ganymede's the last one up from the from the table. And 
I take that back. You can do whatever you want, actually, because I'm not doing a surprise with this because Irene heard it. So you do whatever you want. Cool. Uh, Ganymede is still the very last one up from the table. Uh, and she'll, I, I think, follow whomever out to the to the room where all of this is happening. Yes. But I, I'm I am not armed either, I don't think, nope. am I? Um Yeah, sorry, friends, but I don't think she does anything this round. I think she just goes out there and sees what's happening. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on. Madeline's hirelings are moving in. Irene is on the ground being held by a gorilla. The other one is uh, attacking these these cultists. And you know they are cultists because they are wearing the black and yellow right. robes. Um, we, okay. we don't see Choi Mei Ling anywhere, do we? No. No. Um, great. Uh, that cultist is unconscious. This cultist is does not have a gorilla on him, so he is going to go after uh, the twin, the girl. I should just, I can't call them Wanda and Pietro. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> this one goes after Wanda. <laughs> Uh, 22 will definitely do it. Um, these cultists have uh, sickles, you notice, and it just goes, uh, he just goes and slashes her. And actually, she has to make a con roll now. Jeez Louise. Just a regular con, though. So we're looking for 65. Nope. Okay. Well, good. Um, I think he he goes across uh, her back and uh, she goes to her knees out of pain. Great. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, Charlie, it's your turn. Hi. Um, obviously running in there with everybody else to figure out uh, to what is going on. So... Who does it look like the main aggressors are at this exact moment? The, well, there's a gorilla on Irene. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and there are cultists with sickles. Okay, okay. And you see um, some other unconscious servants that you recognize from uh, Madame Lynn's uh, entourage, but uh, the, the main one, Wanda. Uh, yeah. uh, has just been slashed across the back and has fallen. Okay. I also don't have a weapon. Correct. So, so that sucks. Okay. Is there any, is there any cultist that is, that has like lost their sickle? That I can uh, pick yeah, up? absolutely. One's unconscious. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. take their sickle. Yeah, I'm going to grab it. it. I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah, I want to get this fucking gorilla off of Irene. Are you Hello? Gonna, are you going to attack the gorilla? God, it's such a bad idea, but I think I have to. <laughs> okay. I think I have to. Yeah, I think I have to. Uh, I don't even know. What do I roll for the sickle? <laughs> uh, 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 brawl. Brawl? Okay. I'm going to use my advantage. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> success yeah uh so it's uh what was it it's uh wow it's 2d4 plus okay. if you have a damage build i think i do let me go look though combat i do 2d4 okay 2d4 so that plus oh shit so eight Oh, oh, sorry. No, the 2d4, it should have been, it's part of their damage build. So. Gotcha. Okay. So okay, that okay. encompasses it. So four. Okay. Um, yes, 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 yes. That encompasses it. So four at the gorilla. Um, the gorilla is probably going to fight back. Yeah. Yeah. 
for okay. sure. Okay. So you got a you I mean, got a regular gorilla, so yeah. regular success. Yeah, yeah, like yeah a regular yeah, success. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, nice. Get fucked. <laughs> yeah, get fucked, gorilla. Um, so minus four. Okay, that's where they're at. I'm mostly just trying to get it off of Irene. Like, I'm like, yeah. the damage is, like, secondary. Right, it's mostly, right. like, get, like, even if Shoot. it's, like, come after me, you know, yeah. whatever. Like, Absolutely. Get, get off of her. She's Absolutely. so small on the ground. Stop yeah. it. Roars yeah. in your face. Um, Good. Madam Lynn finally arrives. Which is great. We all love when Madame Lynn arrives, yeah, assesses yeah, yeah. the situation. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. She. Hmm. Uh, she's going to spend her action calling off uh, Tun Tun from Irene, I think. Because she can control them. Do I need to make a check for her though? Mm, do I want to? Yes, I do. That extreme. <laughs> That's her animal handling. <laughs> uh, uh, so she does. Irene, you are let up. <laughs> It doesn't continue to go after you, Charles. Um, but that is what she needs to spend her action on. She can do more stuff next time. Uh, cultists, this, this, and this. Um, uh, cultist, I'm just gonna call it seven because that's the, the stat block I used goes after the other twin. Oh, the other, <laughs> oh my God. Oh wait. Uh, no, that's actually a fail because we were looking for 45. Woo, that's good. Um, yeah, he'll actually fight back too. No. Okay. Yeah, so they're entangled, Cultist 7 and Pietro. <laughs> I just shouldn't call them that. Uh, this cultist uh, seeing Irene is down is probably going to go after her since she's like on the floor. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but misses, misses, uh, swings down at you and you're able to roll out of the way because you have been released by the gorilla <laughs> and uh, one goes after Charles. Sick. That is a hit. Do you want to fight back or? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'd love to. Yeah, you can also dodge if you want. Uh... What, what would be fighting back? What would be, what would that uh, be? Probably with your sickle. So the brawl again. A brawl again. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna brawl, whatever. Okay, here we go. Wee. Oop, a success. Okay, Barely. so they're both regular successes, but I'm gonna give it to mm -hmm. him because he had the lower number. So eight cool. points of damage yep, yep, yep. to you with the sickle as you kind of like engage in this, but he's just obviously more used to it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Victor. Victor goes over to one of the paintings and wrenches it down and starts unloading Arsenal. Yes, he gets his gun. Yes. That's my really good combat sounds. Why is your HP nine? Cause you just did a ton of damage to me. What are you talking about? I never And also did. I had three damage from when I stabbed my hands on glass. Oh right. Already done to me. Yeah. So Okay, well hopefully Victor can save your life. I know you really want that. I want to be indebted to that man for sure. For sure. For uh, sure. He takes his sure. thirty-eight. Get out of edit mode, you. Come here, verbose. Oh, he also, he is quick shot, but I can't think what that does off the top of my head. If anyone knows, let me know. Uh, probably means he can, doesn't have to reload or something. Uh, but here we go. Yes, Victor. Um, uh, he shoots at the one who is on, uh, who attacked Irene. I believe was cultist five. Ew. Nice, nice, nice. 
uh, takes a pot shot and it hits that cultist in the shoulder as he's raising the sickle again to come at you. Amazing. And he is going to, uh, yeah, that's what he does. But uh, you see your weapons where they are and he can assist in handing them off. That is the end of initiative. We are back to the top, Irene. Oh, I'd like to get up and get my gun. <laughs> sure. Uh, get up, get my gun. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna shoot one of the cultists. <laughs> I, I just like imagining the camera like whooshing around as like Victor hands you your gun and both of you pew pew pew. Yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> please let's let's come on. Yeah. Nice. High success. Uh, okay. And I can never remember how much fucking damage this is. Shit. All Victor right. should be at the top of initiative with quick draw. Ah, I will it's move him. 28. Nice, nice. I will move him. Yeah. Three points of damage to nice. whatever cultist is in my way. Yeah, the one who was who was on you. We're going with cultist five for that. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> so you take the other shoulder. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Fuck this guy in particular. Yup. Okay. Beautiful. Um, it's Tun Tun and Ping's turn. Yay! Uh, they are going after uh, cultists seven and eight. Oh, boom! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Aren't you glad they're not attacking you? <laughs> yeah, pretty thankful actually. <laughs> uh, okay. These gorillas! Holy shit! Why is all your luck in just? I, How hard these gorillas can hit? I I don't know. Um, fifty and forty. Fifty. Nope. Unconscious. Forty. Yes. Okay. Cold seven. Yes. Unconscious. Uh, but cultist eight is not. But cultist eight. Um, looks like their jaw's been dislocated. Oh, incredible. Uh, Pietro. Pietro wakes his sister up. Yeah, that's what he does. Uh, and he is able to do that. They are trained in what they need to be trained in. Incredible. Um, Ganymede. Did, uh, did, did Victor throw toss Ganymede her weapon yeah, yeah, in the yeah, yeah, yeah. this. I'll let him I'll yeah. actually let him do that now since he should have been at the top of the initiative order. Okay. Uh, Ganymede catches it mm -hmm. out of the air and she pauses for a moment like she's deciding what to do and I think she leaves the room. I think she's going to go see if Choi Mei Ling is okay. Okay. You do. You make it to her room and you see her in the arms of a man, a sexy silver fox man who turns around and it's Jack Brady. It's Jack Brady. Mm -hmm. Ganymede levels the shotgun at him and says, hello, Mr. Brady. Everything all right, Ganymede? I'm sure you can hear what's going on in the entryway. Yeah, I uh, was keeping a bit of a distant eye and saw them enter the estate and thought, now might be a good time to get Mei Ling out of here. That, that seems logical. Also perhaps logical that you are working with them, that you staged all of this as a distraction so you could take her away. I 
might have uh, tipped some folks off about where the um, people who had been breaking into Ho Fang's property were staying. But when my associates got word to me that Yen Yu had taken Choi Mei Ling, I, I knew she would hurt her if I didn't hand over the scroll and I can't do that. Everything depends on what's in there. But I wasn't gonna leave her I would love to know more about how everything depends upon this scroll remaining in your possession, Mr. Brady. And uh, you should talk quickly, but they won't be long in there, I don't think. I'll give you an address where to come once everything settled here. Tell her that uh, the order took Mei Ling. Ganymede looks to Mei Ling. Yeah, she's see. like getting to her feet now. Yeah. And I, I, I want, I'm trying to determine if this is what she wants. Sure, sure. Um, make yeah. a psychology? No, I don't think you need to. I think she, okay. the way that she's like holding on to him um, and, and she, she looks at you and says, you can trust Jack Brady. I trusted him enough to endure days and days of torture. Just to keep his location a secret. Ganymede looks back to Jack and holds his eyes for a moment. And then she lifts uh, the, the the barrel of the gun so that it's pointed at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says, I'll take that address. Bring the scrolls with you, perhaps. Yeah, he gives you the address. I don't have it on my noggin, but he gives it uh, to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And she says, she takes it and says, all right, now go. And after they're about five feet away from where they were standing, she uh, unloads one of the two barrels just into the wall so that others could hear that she's fired a shot here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Love it. Okay, uh, back to the uh, combat room. Ha, <laughs> ah, she was just gonna be missing. But you're too clever for me. Um, okay, uh, cultist, cultist number five. Uh, eh. Uh, Irene, you want to be one or two? One. Yay, goes after you. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, was that a 93? Okay, no, that doesn't happen. This is the one that's been shot twice in the shoulder. Uh, yeah. And you can see, like, the, there's no thought there, only instinct. Uh, Charles, Victor tosses you your gun. 
if you want it. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because I actually would rather use the sickle. Okay, he tosses that you. Such it, a it, it, it hits you in the face. No, it doesn't. I catch it. <laughs> it almost hits me it in the face, and I face. reflex grab nice. onto it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am going to swing no, the, sickle the sickle again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the sickle. Well, I'm just minutely better at the sickle than I am at shooting a gun. Mm -hmm. Which is like 1%, like not a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go after the nearest cultist. Sickle him. Yeah. Give him a taste it. of his own sickle. Yeah. Okay, here I go. Yeah. Fail. <laughs> Yeah. I'm bad at fighting. It's fine. I'm sexy. It's fine. I'm not supposed to be good at everything. It's true. Okay. It's true. Madam Lynn. Now that the gorillas have been called on, I can use her spells. Spells, spells, spells. Okay. Uh, she's going to go after the one who's still one of the ones that's still standing. That is, why is that so many magic points? I'm probably, no, I didn't write it down wrong. Okay. Well, that's what we're using. Um, she points a finger at one of them and they start reacting to something that's not there. Um, and he begins to like back out of the room. He's not even looking at her. So he's reacting to something none of you can see. Um, and you see her, she's breathing hard. Um, looks like that took some resources. Uh, retreating. So there are two who are still up and uh, fighting. Uh, it's Victor's turn. Victor is a great guy. Just a great, great fella who's going to take a pot shot at the one who keeps trying to charge it, Irene. Uh, yeah, nice. Okay, this time he shoots him in the head. Dead. Nice. Um... Irene, it's your turn. There's only one cultist who is uh, not retreating or unconscious. Cool. Well, I'm I'm gonna shoot them because awesome. they're here. Uh... Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> we get dual headshots. Yep. From the two of you. That's pretty awesome. Oh, that's the one who was kind of uh, engaged with. Charlie. Um, and we. Oh, that ended pretty quickly, though. So. Let me see. I'll let Jack make this roll, I think. Because he's got to get out. Obviously, there wasn't a way out of. Uh, Choi Mei Ling's room. Nice. <laughs> um, so Jack Brady is moving somewhere in the house. He can move pretty far, and Choi is, uh, Mei Ling is walking on her own, so. <sighs> Ganymede. Ganymede will watch them just to see that they're going in a direction where I think they can actually get out. Mm -hmm. They're going uh, deeper into the house. You have no idea where he came in from. Yeah. Um, well, he's he's a, a very um, he's very creative. I'm sure he'll figure something out. Mm -hmm. uh, Ganymede uh takes her time uh I, I think i'll kind of wait until i until it sounds like the fighting has ended before i run in out of breath she's gone they've taken her 
make some kind of social check. <laughs> All right. Um, and I will, whatever it is, no matter what check it is, I know I'm going to use advantage. Okay. My, my advantage on this. How's that? Oh, geez. Fast talk. I have a five in fast talk. How come there's just no straight up lie? That would be persuade or charm. Uh, yeah, well, I'll use, I can use charm. I forgot there was persuade. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'll use charm and I will use an advantage. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Luck is a free resource. Uh, yeah, 13 points of luck. <clears throat> 55, that would take me down to 52. Oh. My luck is 49 if it makes you feel any better. Yeah. Um, damn it, yeah, I'll spend it. Okay. Damn. Then Madame Lynn's eyes look to you and there is no uh, sign of doubt in what you have said. And the room goes quiet. As the gorillas are just putting their hands, like there are two dead ones. One ran. Um, and uh, two unconscious ones that Tun Tun and Ping are just holding down. And I think that's where we're gonna end today's episode. Seems like a good spot. You know, super cash. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad my plan worked, but it, ow. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Well, lots of good things happened uh, for me. Uh, let's go around and talk to everybody. Uh, plug in anything you like. Uh, let's start with Summer. Hello, I'm Hi. Summer. You can find me on Twitter at Just a Summer Job. That's where I tweet and retweet about everything that I've got going on on the internet here every Saturday, obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, tonight we'll be over on a Narcissus channel um, playing uh, From Dust Before It Settled, which is an Iron Sworn game that Kian is also in. Um, so check us out over there. Um, but yeah, all I have to promo is missing Annie Lee. Hey. Hey. We just finished up both of our penultimate episodes of Reunion and Vanishing. Crazy. We've been working on this for over a year. A year? Like a, a, year. Over a year. Yeah, like a year. Um, so it's kind of crazy to see it um, all come together. Uh, and as we enter the finale, um, yeah, all I can say is go listen to it because next week will lastly be the last week that I promo it. Uh -uh. So... Yay! Go listen. Go listen now. Uh, let's head up to Allie. That's um, wow. It was like everything that I love about yeah. this game. I got to read the Necronomicon, <laughs> the literal Necronomicon. It's like my dream. So it was so cool. Um, and uh, I, who I'm kind of anxious about having made some. Play, play some big bets with sanity loss and now some luck loss. Um, and I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't think I like morally ambiguous Ganymede very much. I want the old Ganymede back. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll have her back very soon. Um, mm -hmm. But gosh, what a what a fun, what a fun session. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Allison Robinson with two L's and a Y, where I tweet about space and robots and games and other cool stuff like that. If you're into that sort of thing, follow me there. 
and catch me back here next week. Um, I just gotta say, I can I just say, Missing Annie Lee is like blowing my mind. It is so, it's so good. Like it's just so narratively creative. It surprises me every episode. Um, I just love it so much. Uh, so, so check it out. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Kiana. What do what we, what do we got to say? What do we got to say? What are we saying? Yeah. Well, I guess for me, uh, you can find me over on Twitter at Kiana S. Best way to figure out I'm doing it when I'm not here on the channel, mostly just here on the channel though. Uh, like Summer said, I will be over on our sister channel doing From Dust, uh, Iron Swan. Uh, but actually earlier in the day, I will also be on that channel again, uh, co-streaming uh, some uh, Summer Games Fest uh, as we uh, get to watch uh, what they're announcing about new games that are coming out uh, in the next year. So uh, definitely just going to be hanging out, seeing what Devolver has coming up because I love their stuff, uh, their weird, weird indie stuff. So yeah, come hang out with me over there at uh, 4.30 my time Eastern, <laughs> 1.30 Pacific. My brain just had to do math for a hot second nah. there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can go check me out over there. And of course, you can hear me uh, on Missing Annie Lee as one of the cast members there. Uh, and yeah, that's it for me personally. What about you, Lauren? Uh, you can find me here every Saturday running Masks of Iron Lathodep at 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, otherwise, you can catch me on Missing Annie Lee as one of the GMs. It's great. Go listen to it. Uh, I don't. What else am I doing? I do stuff. I do stuff all the time. I'm just blanking on what it is. A lot of the stuff, it's, it's planned stuff right now. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We have plans. We're going to play some more Resident Evil as soon as we can after Allie's birthday on Monday. Happy birthday, Allie. Happy birthday. We love you. I'll kiss you in a second. Um... <laughs> But yeah, just join us here. Thank you to our sponsors, Roll20, Dice, Envy, and Grinding Coffee Co. Uh, thank you to everybody who subbed. Thank you, Hawk, for those tips to keep everyone alive, our vitamins. Uh, thank you for everybody who watched and, and talked in chat. Y'all are all awesome. Um, if you ever miss an episode, we post them on YouTube. If you... Uh, need to know what we're doing when we're going to stream. Follow us on Twitter for announcements and surprise Resident Evil streams. That's usually what it is when it's a surprise. Um, but otherwise, we are going to go raid our friend Invert from Team Emporium. And yeah, that's what we will be doing. So we'll see uh, what Chumin and Zeb got up to in the bathtub next time. <laughs> Wait, bye everybody. Bye!